Good evening everyone, time for another member update. We're going to start off again with the long term Bitcoin chart. Just uh, not saying the top is in, but it's fairly likely that the top is in. It's a parabolic rise and the way parabolic rises work is that if it's not followed by a steeper rise, then it, it's going to crash. So I'm still in the process of moving money out of Bitcoin into cash and uh, into other assets rather than cryptocurrencies because I think short term they're overvalued. Do I think this is a long term top? Not at all, but short term overvalued. Um, when we go to the seven day chart, you can see uh, Bitcoin is rolling over on uh, second wave down apparently. It hit a low of about 1650 from a high of 1850. Actually, went up about over 1900. Let's go to Bitcoin Wisdom and pull up the Bitfinex chart. So you can see on Bitfinex, we're now down below 1794, uh, below 1800, and that's down, say, over $100 from the top. 19. It shows 1908, uh, but we actually got down to right down here around 1650 so is this a second wave down probably uh, like I said if you don't go into new highs you're going lower so the window here is expiring now we could do one of these that is possible one thing that makes me think we won't is because we have sort of a double top form uh, sh shoulders head and shoulders sort of formation we haven't seen that before in the past in the past when we correct and go higher uh, we just have that one drop and then we go higher we don't really have two drops so if this drop continues this shoulder reaches down it's pretty good chance that we're going down from here so I'm fully in USDT I have a couple for trading positions but I'm pretty much all in USDT uh, the the action on Florin coin was absolutely phenomenal uh, I was a little bit blown away by that. I ended up selling into this rise right here and ended up having to sell more. I'm pretty much liquidated out of the coin. I didn't want to be, but uh, when I saw prices up in here this, at 63.20, I bought most of mine in at around 300, so that was a 20 fold move for me. And I, I just didn't really have a choice. I had an opportunity to get Bitcoin at a relatively high price and begin to liquidate it into USDT and liquidate it into cash. So uh, I'm going to scale back into Florin Coin. I have a token amount left, but I'll probably scale back in. I still believe in the fundamentals, but I think that it kind of got ahead of itself. The news was something to the effect that uh, they had uh, integrated a video platform into the Alexandria network. So you can see Florin Coin is down 35% today. Now, I actually made uh, a decent amount of money trading Florin coin, not just selling the ones I had, but buying both of these breakouts and just riding it up, adding to the position. Just seeing that strength, I was just buying into it. But now it's pretty much over, uh, pretty much played out, going to be that way for quite some time. Um, so we just have to keep an eye on what the next action is. The action today was next, NXT, and it's typical breakout into new highs. Uh, the best play, of course, is going into new highs. As Jesse Livermore always said, uh, a new high price is the best price to buy at. And the reason why is because everybody who owns the asset is winning. So it's kind of counterintuitive. It goes against human nature. But that's what you have to do. That's, uh, that's the way to win uh, if, if you want to be a consistent winner. And most of my trades fail. Uh, when I buy on new breakouts or buy into new highs, uh, usually I, I have a time stop. I have to liquidate, and um, but usually I only take maybe a fifteen, twenty, thirty dollar loss. Whereas if I get a big win and I catch one of these, any one of these waves up, then I make maybe five hundred to a thousand dollars. So that's the way I play it. But yeah, Florin coin is pretty much played out. So let's go to the silver chart here. I'm going to read part of an article that's about silver. I've drawn a couple arrows in here. If you do the math, this is a move from roughly 4 to 16. 
and roughly a 15 year period. So if you do the math, it comes to close uh, around 10% a year. So if you bought in back in 2002 and just continued to stack, say you dollar cost average, so you didn't buy that much when it prices were super high and you ended up getting more when they were low, uh, you, you got a 10%, pretty much a continuous 10% return over the course of that 10% per year. Does that keep up with inflation? Probably doesn't keep up with the inflation of the healthcare system and some other things, but it's a healthy return considering the alternative, which is the interest rates. Now, let's look at this article here, how to stick it to the bankers, and it goes through the history of Bernanke and his support of the banks, and you know what I think of these people, they're disgusting slime balls. But it's just good to read this reminder here because I was fairly certain about Florin coin, fairly certain, very certain about Bitcoin, and I'm still very certain about silver. I think that when all is said and done, I think the return on silver is actually going to rival what we've seen in Bitcoin. But we're just not there yet. So let's read this silver security. Several weeks ago, we offered a partial review of how your bank is ripping you off. Today we offer a practical, elegant way that you can stick it to your banker, the Federal Reserve, and the whole doggone fiat system. But first some context courtesy of Dr. Keith Weiner and his recent article titled, Will Gold or Silver Pay the Higher Interest Rate? Quote, over thousands of years gold has not displaced silver. The reason is that gold and silver do not directly compete. They perform different functions. Both are heavy and shiny metals. Both are resistant to tarnish and they're good conductors of heat and electricity. But their physical similarity has misdirected attention from their separate roles. Gold was selected by traders as the best money to carry large values, especially over long distances. Before gold, they used cattle because cows move under their own power. Gold does not move itself, but its value density is so high that you can easily carry a fortune in your pocket. Today, gold can be moved anywhere in the world in days. The entire globe is effectively the trading region for gold. This means that gold is not subject to local gluts or shortages. Gold supply and demand are quickly smoothed out over the entire world. This helps make gold the most liquid commodity. Silver was chosen by wage earners not for carrying large value over distance, but to carry value over long periods of time. Before they used silver, they used salt. Salt is not perishable and is accessible to even unskilled laborers. Workers need a way to accumulate small amounts of value every month and store it until needed to buy groceries in retirement. Gold does not work as well for this purpose. An ounce of gold is far too much for most people to buy weekly or even monthly. In smaller sizes, you pay a high premium which will be lost when you sell. Silver offers a better deal for small savers. Silver is the most hoardable commodity. Gold tends to be owned by wealthier people. It is likely that a large number of people that have it is likely that a larger number of people have smaller amounts of silver. The wage earner who has a modest stack of silver coins does not need interest so much as he needs security." End quote. How to stick it to your banker, the Federal Reserve, and the whole doggone fiat money system. If you already own gold or silver, what follows may seem rather elementary, but if you're a wage earner and don't own any precious metals and don't know where to start, here's a practical, elegant way for you to stick it to your banker, the Federal Reserve, and the whole doggone fiat money system. To be clear, we like to keep things really simple. Thus, we boiled it all down to a simple two-step approach that just about everyone should be able to carry out. Step one, go to your nearest ATM and pull out a $20 bill. Step two, go down the street to your local coin shop and trade your $20 for one ounce silver eagle. Congratulations. What you've just done is trade a dubious debt construct, i.e. a Federal Reserve legal tender scrap of fiat script for de a debt-free long-term store of value. Do you feel good about your trade? If so, do it again. Not only will you be preparing for a highly uncertain future, 
you'll also be reducing your implied backing of the corrupt banking and Federal Reserve System by reducing your stake of Federal Reserve script notes. Now we're not suggesting that you close out your bank accounts. Indeed, a bank account is needed to execute financial transactions under the present system. But this won't always be the case. Hint, hint. In short, we're encouraging you to shore up and accumulate some real wealth given the possibility that your bank and your deposits may not be there at some point in the future. Most likely your deposits won't be there at precisely the moment when you need your money the most. Contrary to what the Fed Chair Janet Yellen says, everything is not awesome. As an aside, last we checked, silver was running about $16.30 an ounce, so $20 should cover the cost of the one-ounce silver coin and the dealer premium. Now, what are you waiting for? Take action today. That is great advice. It's so important right now when everyone is demoralized. I believe in silver, physical silver, stacking it more than ever. Uh, I don't know when the day is that this system collapses, but every day is one day closer, and it's going to happen. Uh, there's no getting around it. It may be the cryptocurrencies that actually trigger it. Uh, the bankers are scared. Jay Snips did a video recently on this uh, that malware that's out there that basically locks up your PC and charges a ransom in Bitcoin, demonizes Bitcoin. Uh, the bankers are definitely afraid of cryptocurrencies, but I think the writing's on the wall. I don't. There's no way they can stop them. I said that from the very beginning in 2011 when I started the Bitcoin channel and started talking about these things, and I still think there's no way they can stop it. But they they try to do all kinds of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and they've done that with silver for the last 15 years, as long as this bull market has run. Nevertheless, I think that the the silver play is going to pay off and it's going to pay off big. It may even pay off as big as Bitcoin. And we'll talk to you next time.